to, but I'm back. I'm Two Martini Stitcher, both here on YouTube and on Instagram, and this is my channel about cross stitch. <laughs> and I am back today with a special episode of a whip parade, a special whip parade, not of all my whips, just of what I started in Mania. So those of you who've been around for a while, know that I did 21 new starts um, in May. I started one new project every weekday. I had four whips that were left over from last May that I worked on on the weekend. I managed to finish one of them during May, so that was exciting. Um, and yeah, so if you're new here, welcome. I hope that you're excited to see a bunch of new starts because <laughs> that's what I did. Um, as we go, I'm going to be keeping a list. Should have brought up a piece of paper. You know what we're gonna do? I'm just gonna like write it here in my planner. Um, I do have my planner out that showed all of the new starts. Write them down every day. And um, I'm gonna keep track of which ones I think might be candidates for a faster finish. Like things that I think could be finished up in like three, maybe four days at the most days of stitching. Some of these you will definitely be seeing next May. So this was my very first time doing like a full mania. I really just found floss tube and the entire like cross stitch community, um, like February, March of last year. And I first learned about mania when everybody started talking about it in April. And I, felt not, not ready, not ready for that. Matter of fact, I watched all the people starting that many projects and thought that they were insane. <laughs> Welcome to the insanity. Uh, so, but somewhere around November, I decided I really wanted to do a full mania this year. Going in, I thought there was a possibility that I would burn out, that I would peter out somewhere around week two, middle of week two. Um, I loved it. I had an absolute blast. I will definitely be doing it next year. Um, right now, tentatively, I plan to do um, the Blimey Cat Method, which was started by um, Brittany of Ingleside Imaginarium. I'll link her floss tube below. Where, and I kind of do this for my regular whips anyway, that if it's been a year and they're not finished, I always stitch on them on their birth date. So next year, any of these pieces that are not finished will slot into that day of mania. So I only get as many new starts as things I finish. I'm not really sure how that's gonna work out with the dates next year. I might just go crazy and push it to like a full 31 days or I might just rejigger the dates. I liked doing just weekdays. I think that's the reason that I kept up my stamina and it was fun all the way through, was I would have five new starts and then I would have a weekend to work on kind of my like regular monthly things and to touch other projects and to not start things. So we'll see how things line up next year, but just know that I'm sure some of these will not be finished. I mean, there will definitely be things in here that are not finished next May, but I just finished filming my regular weekly floss tube. So that's the last of the mimosa from that. Let's get started, and I'm going to show you all the things that I started in May in the order that I started them. So I'm not going to tell you what date because the dates are wonky since I started weekdays. We'll just go 1 through 21. I had 21 new starts. The very first one, this feels like so long ago, guys, was Without a Mouse by Blackbird Designs, um, and I started this on a piece of um, 32 count linen in cauldron and I'm stitching it. I keep it in this little cute bendy flip and I'm stitching it with um, Witching Hour, Gentle Arts Witching Hour, which was a new color for them from Nashville. And this is how far I got. Isn't this fabric amazing? I got this off of, I think, um, Cheryl the Wayside Stitcher's D-Stash. So I got a decent start on this. I don't know. Um, it's a little bigger than I thought it would be. I mean, it just looks so tiny there, right? Um, 
which I'm thrilled about. I'm not mad about at all. I don't know that I could finish that in like three or four days of stitching. I feel like that's more like a week. So I don't know that that's going to go on my list of quick finishes. Um, although, I don't know. Can I do a, like look at me already, I'm like, mm, can I do a second list of sort of quick finishes? Can we do it like a smalls, a medium <laughs> list? Already I want to put all the things on the list and we just started. Okay, that's not a good sign. That's not a good sign. I'm gonna put a question mark. I'm gonna put a question mark on that one. Maybe, maybe I'd have to get through I think some other ones first. All right. My second start of Mania, if you guys have been around, you know, was kind of a non-starter, um, Metamorphosis. I should have brought the two pieces that I originally started. Um, I will link the video, the daily vlog that shows the two ways I attempted to start this and did not love on that second day of Mania. So after Mania was over, I circled back this past weekend and restarted it with a beautiful palette of silks gifted to me by a dear friend. And so this, this I loved and it's going to be the start. So here is the palette. So I'm going to do each motif in a different color and it'll be a gradient from like pink to purple to dusky purples to gray to black. And it's going to be beautiful on this piece of 32 count no name fabric from be stitch me so that was the that's where it's, this is not what i stitched on the second uh second day of mania on the second day of mania it did not go so well <laughs> uh but now it is and so i'm gonna leave that in that spot on like my second mania as my second mania start um even though that stitching is not what i did that day all right so day three was and these were all wheel spins so i had one wheel that was for shore mania starts that had 10 or 11 projects on it and then i had another wheel that had a whole bunch that were possible mania starts so every day i would spin a wheel Day three was Stitch or Die, my heartstring samplery. I am doing this on a piece of, I believe 32 count. I didn't count it out, but it's a piece of mystery linen from Color Cotton that I got in a grab bag with called for ish flosses. Some of them are called for, um, some of them I changed up a little bit. This is my color palette. Oops, see, and I don't even have one on there. Um, and this is where I got two on stitch or die so this is super super i feel like this is really close to a finish because actually i even need to unpick this a very eagle-eyed viewer caught that i went even too far on that border so that's the bottom so i need to go across here and just fill in a few more motifs like this is probably the closest this gets a big old star because this will probably be the first thing i circle back to and finish is stitch or die um, I also started this as a stitch along with Leslie Hurley. Um, I'll link her floss tube channel below. She started, she and I started this on the same day. So this actually was not a wheel spin. See, I told you I did wheel spins, lied. There were two that were planned starts. This was one of them as a stitch along with Leslie Hurley. So, um, and I will, I will give you guys the final conversion for this when I finished it, because I have stuff that I just, I pulled, I don't know that I'll use, I'll probably use. I know for sure these flowers were supposed to be something else. Um, and some of them were supposed to be a gold color and they're all of this color and cotton antique rose. Um, so when these get finished, I will make sure to post my conversion. I know that the cat, mm, he might be cast iron skillet. I made him black because I have a black cat. And I've already put that thread away, but I have it noted somewhere. So I'll make sure you guys have the conversion when I'm done with it. But for right now, I'm not even totally positive what colors I'm using where. It'll be how I feel when I go to stitch the motifs. So, but I think that will be a finish 
pretty soon because that's going to be, I think, the first thing that I circle back to um, is stitcher die. My next start was, I already lost count. This is four, right? Start number four. You're Okay by Bendy Stitchy. Love this. I'm not sure I'm going to put the You're Okay, I guess, even though I love it. Like, I love that kind of just like, it's not super snarky, but it's just, you know, it's not, it's not a super su sweet valentine -y, but I just love the fractor look of it. So I might, what I think I'm going to end up doing is moving this flower up and putting like my initials or the date or something down below. But I've been wanting to do a fractor for a while. This was a Nashville release of hers that I loved. So it was one of the two things that I pre-ordered for Nashville. That's how much I wanted to stitch it. I'm stitching it on an 18 count Ada in country, vintage country mocha. And I think it's all called for. I think I'm using all called for flosses. Yes, she calls for 310, that's anchor black, just because I've gotten to the point where I just prefer anchor. And so I just use anchor black for everything that calls for 310. So there's my start. And, um, you know, this is, this is a solid medium. It's not, it's under a hundred and a, by a hundred, but not by a lot. It's 91 by 90. It is stitching up pretty quick. I mean, that was one day of stitching. Um, but I don't know, this is, this is definitely more of a question mark medium. And I feel like that would take more than three or four ish days to finish. I feel like that would be another like week. I don't think it'd be more than a week, but I feel like that's a week. Okay, next up was Primitive Tarot Needle Book by Wild Violet Cross Stitch. Love that so much. Um, and I am doing this on a piece of 18 count Ada that I tea coffee dyed and baked the heck out of. Um, yeah, this is the way it goes. Look how good that came out, guys. That looks so old and crusty. I love it. This was literally like a, a um, thrift store find. You know, it was the, the kind that was in just the like thin plastic, not the hard plastic sleeve, but the little thin plastic sleeve. And I snapped it up for like a buck, buck fifty. And it looks amazing. So I'm stitching this with Classic Color Works Blackbird for the floss. And this is where I got, like, I felt like that was really good progress for that one day. But this, again, I think would be like a solid week of stitching at least. So, I mean, I was like, I feel like this would stitch up really fast. And I was stitching it, I think, on a Zoom meetup. And Michelle Garrett was like, not as fast as you think. And she knows because she's done it. If you've not seen hers, um... I can't remember who she had finish it. Maybe, I, I don't want to say because I think I'd be wrong, but she had someone do the finishing for her and it came out so good, amazing. Um, so that's Primitive Tarot. Needle Book, Notions and Needle Book by Wild Violet Cross Stitch. I may attempt the finishing on that myself. I made sure that the piece of fabric I dyed and whatnot was big enough for the inside and to do all the finishing, so. We'll see. That I may try to finish myself. Okay. So start number six was Blackbird by Blackbird Designs. <laughs> and this I thought was super funny because I'm also stitching it with Blackbird. And I started it the day after Primitive Tarot. Like I'm stitching both of them with Blackbird. Never fear. I have ordered more Blackbird. Because <laughs> you guys are probably looking at those two skeins of floss going... And that's not enough. Yeah, I realized that as soon as I started these and ordered some more. So here was my start on Blackbird. Um, this one I feel like maybe could stitch up in like three or four days. Um, I know that's not really that much of a start on it in one day, but I feel like that was a Friday. And my Friday starts didn't get a whole lot because I was still working on the Be Well and Stitch. Um, charts, which I did not talk about in the weekly floss tube update. Well, oh well, we'll talk about it next week. Um, yeah, so that's my start, but I think I'm going to put this down. 
And this is going on the list of possible finish up quicks. Because I think it would. That that border is pretty easy and repetitive and it's just, I don't know. Monochromatic stitching always feels like it goes faster because you don't have to worry about color changes. So that's part of it. All right. Start number seven was the Magnificent Strutting Tom by Lindy Stitches. Um, I bought the full kit. I don't know, you can see all the fabric and stuff in there from Market. This was a, the kit, you can still get the pattern, um, but the kit was a market exclusive and I, that was the other thing I pre-ordered, um, was the Strutting Tom kit. So it's with all of the called for um, fabric and it came with the three colors of Weeks Dye Works flosses, like not a full skein, just what you needed. And then it, you had to provide some other DMC. So there's all the flosses for it. And it's on this piece of fabric. And this is my start. I got a really good start on him. So I have the dark blue color of his body, like all done. Um, and I mean, there's still quite a bit of stitching on him, but I feel like he could stitch up in three or four days, like if I just focused on him. So I'm gonna put him on the list too. Cause he's, I mean, like that's all the bigger he is. So. He's going on my list of possible finish up. Finish up quick, finish it up quick, which is good because if you guys know me, if you've been around for a while, you know, I might be slightly obsessed with turkeys and I have a lot of turkey patterns. So if I finish him up, that means I can start another turkey, right? I think so. So starting Tom on the list for June to finish up. Okay. Next up was Souvenirs of the Heart, Star Spangled Spectacular by With Thy Needle and Thread. Um, this was also a market release. I have the other two in the series. Um, there's a fall one, Autumn and Amana. There's a Christmas one that I can never remember the name of. Uh, but I figured if I was going to start one of them, I should maybe start with July, the 4th of July one, even though this isn't going to get finished. This isn't going to get finished by then. Um, I am stitching this on a 28 count. It was a bone Lugana that I tea coffee dyed. And I am stitching it as instructed one over one, which is why it's not gonna get done. I mean, I got a good start on it. Look at that. I got the whole flagpole and flag done. And look at those cute tiny stitches. I'm doing this, I think, with all called for or almost all called for. Um, I think the white isn't. The white I have whitewash and it calls for eggshell. And I feel like there's something else that I subbed out that I can't remember what it is right now. Maybe not. Um, so that's my start. Uh, you know, it is a tiny chart. It's not, I mean, it's not that big. I mean, look at this. It's gonna fit on this little scrap of paper and this is a very generous, or scrap of paper, scrap of fabric. And this is a pretty generous, I cut out a pretty generous piece for it. But it's pretty dense. Like that house is dense stitching one over one. So I feel like this would take more than a couple of days. I'm gonna give it a maybe. I mean, it would be nice to get this done you know, and finished up so I could have it out next month. Mm, we'll see. Maybe I bought that to the top. <laughs> you like how I'm making plans as I'm going through the whip parade? <laughs> that's just always what you're in for here around here. That's, that's just how it goes. That's how we roll. All right, next up, <laughs> we're gonna put a question mark by that. That might actually come out sooner rather than later. It'd be nice to have that done this year and not have it lingering around till next year, which I think is what would happen. All right, next up is Whip It Good by Heartstring Samplery. This was a charity chart that she released in PDF form only on her Etsy shop last December. And it was only available in December. So she said she's gonna re-release it at some point. But for right now, I think you can't get it. So that's Whip It Good. I am stitching this on an 18 count Ada from Be Stitch Me in Maroon with Sulky White, one strand of Sulky White, and I love it. This is not going to get finished. 
quickly or anytime soon, but look how amazing it is. Oh, I really love it. So, um, and I love how the one strand of Sulky is finishing up or is stitching up on that. So that is Whip It Good by Heartstring Sampley. All right. Next up is uh, a project from My Stitcher's Heart by Hands On Design. So this is My Stitcher's Heart. It was a Nashville release this year and it has all of these projects in it, all four of these projects. Um, I love this, but I have another box top pattern that I'm doing in Mania. I love this one, I love this one, and that's what I started. So I started for um, May, the tomato pincushion. And I am stitching this on a 32 count linen in platinum, which I think is what's called for. Yes, 32 count platinum linen, and I'm doing it with the called for colors. And that's what I got right there. So that's one, each side has three I think each side has three of these vines yep all four sides have three of these vines so um but it's stitched up really pretty quick this would be this is going to be fantastic like um like stitchy meetups she were like retreat stitching so I feel like this would stitch up pretty fast like this is another one that could go by in a couple days um and I feel like I could stitch that, this up in three or four days. So that'll go on the list of quicker finishes. And then I'll attempt to actually finish it like that. I do have some green felt. I don't know about making that. That seems harder. But I could certainly do the little top, right? And stick some pins in it. I say that there's a like pile. I'm looking at a pile of stuff on my table that needs to be finished. It needs to be fully finished. Let's not talk about the pile of whips over there that need to be finished, finished. Um, all right. The next start was my other planned start. So this was not a wheel spin. I knew I was starting this on the 15th with Deborah from Stitch the Stash, and that's Summer at Cherry Hill um, by Brenda Gervais. We've been planning this start together for a while. So I was really excited. I bought this last summer off of Stash Unload the chart and all the called for flosses together. And I decided to kind of go out of the box, take a chance, and I am stitching this on 32 count Cherry Pit Brown by r and r And this is where I got to. So this came with all of the called for flosses, but I am changing out this main red color that is called for as chili pepper because it didn't look right on this fabric. So I switched that out for Briar Rose, Gentle Arts Briar Rose, but that's the only change I made. Everything else is gonna be as called for. And so far, we'll see how the rest of the colors look on this fabric, but so far it looks amazing and I love it. I'm so far loving this color of fabric. So that's a fun one. Not gonna be a quick one to finish up. <laughs> that one I would love to stitch on that'll be really fun to stitch on in the like this summer though um, as I eat some cherries some local cherries all right so this puts, a, puts us into the third week so that's 5 10 11 this is start number 12 start number 12 was needles dance clab by summer house stitch works ink circles and hands-on design you guys know this chart. It was a Nashville release last year. I love it. I am stitching it on a piece of 32 count linen um, in Summer Breeze. Summer Breeze, yes. Hand, by dye, hand dyed by Stephanie. Summer Breeze. And this I also got off of Stash Unload somewhere. Um, I have a couple of things though on her fabric and I love them. And I picked all of them up all of her fabrics. I don't know that I've ever ordered from her, but I'm going to have to because these fabrics are great. So there's my start. I got a pretty decent start on this. Mm -hmm. Needle falling. Look, little owl needle minder. I thought he, he would live in the forest. So there's my start. 
and I am using all of the call for colors. The only thing change that I think I'm planning to make right now is that I don't love this hazelnut color as the fill in for dance and I think I'm going to use like the lighter pink, this lighter pink color that's not used as much in the chart. So that, and the hazelnut isn't on here, it's in another project, I guess. So, um, but that's my start on Needles Dance. This would not be a three or four day finish. I don't think it would take that long. It's not that big. Um, 97 by 133. Yep, that's a solid medium. That'd take a couple weeks. <laughs> I, the way that I stitch, because as I said, I stitch on multiple things every day. So the way I stitch, that would take me a couple weeks. All right, next up. Oh, I was so excited for this start. I will have to say, even now going through all these, I love all these projects. I was so excited to start all these projects, and I'm excited to continue stitching on them and finish them. There's not a single wheel spin that I went, mm. no, love all of them. But this day was Heartstring Samplery, Cross Stitch Nation. And I am stitching this on a 32 count mystery even weave. I have no idea. I got this off of Stash Unload. I did gobble gob on it and I just thought it was perfect for this as well. I am stitching this with one strand of floss over, uh, over two on the 32 count and I think it looks great. I just... I thought it would be fun. I, it is a little, like you can see the X's with the one strand. The coverage is still great, I think, but you can really see the X's and I thought that would be fun for this piece. And I'm using called for, the called for colors. I think I subbed a couple weeks dye works for classic color works instead, just because I was good. Yep, I made a couple changes. I changed Charlotte's Pink to House Wine, Fathom to Wavy Navy, and Red Rocks to Barn Door. But they were like, I mean, those are, I'm staying very true. Very true to, that was just a, I prefer Classic Color Works a little bit over Weeks Dye Works, and I was kidding this up at Acorns and Threads. So I was able to like pull the Weeks Dye Works off the wall, and then go and see if there was a Classic Color Works or Gentle Arts that was pretty much exact. And if there wasn't, then I stayed with um, the called for, but um, so there we go. Cross Stitch Nation. Love this piece. Love this piece. That's not a quick, up. that's not a quick finish it up. Um, all right, next up is this one by Jeanette Douglas, my very first Jeanette Douglas, other than her Be Well pattern, uh, Letters for Mom. I am gonna stitch this three times, one for each of my girls. So this is gonna be slotted into like kind of my monthly stitching. Uh, the first one, of course, will be for my oldest daughter. Her birth date is the 23rd. So I'm gonna stitch on this every 23rd. Um, so you'll see this one regularly. And I am stitching this on 36 count linen in flax with all the called for colors because it's gorgeous and so I didn't change anything. Someone had asked if I was planning on personalizing them and changing up the colors for each girl and that's actually a fantastic idea. It didn't really occur to me. Um, the colors in this are really pretty and I think all three girls would really like these colors. So I don't know that I will switch them up, but there's my start. Um, this border is super delicate. Like it's this pretty lacy border. It does show up well. I mean, you can see even on the model, like it's, it's delicate. This isn't the called for linen. I can't remember what it called for, but it's close. I mean, you can see I didn't deviate that much. Um, and it does still show up. I feel like that's antique lace. Don't quote me, but I think that's antique lace. Um, and that border has been really fun to stitch. I said before, I was worried. I was worried that that was gonna be a fuzzy border and I was gonna hate stitching it, but it's not. It's really fun to stitch, which is good because I have to do it three times. So there's my start on letters from mom. And 
my next mania wheel spin start was you guys can see I stitch a wide variety of projects. I clearly do not have like one single aesthetic <laughs> or um, like I'll stitch anything. I'll stitch anything if it calls to me and I like it. Um, oh, not that one. Although I do have all that and I wanna do some of those charts too, but I started Welcome Foolish Mortals by The Witchy Stitcher. And I am stitching this on, I believe it's what she called for, or at least she made a note that the model was stitched on. Um, this is 16 count Ada in Phantom by Picture This Plus. And I'm actually stitching it with DMC Etoile, and I'm gonna use Glow in the Dark. DMC Glow in the Dark Plus for the eyes. So there is my start on that. This is kind of a big guy. It's a lot of stitching. So this is not gonna be a quick finish up kind of kind of thing. So um, there we go. So that's Welcome Foolish Mortals. But it'll it's I'm I love it. And there's a whole bunch of Haunted Mansion projects I want to stitch, so I better at least get started on them. Maybe that'll slip into some dark 13 stitching or I think October I'm just gonna stitch nothing but Halloween dark patterns um, on my whips. Next one up was Olga by Plum Street Samplers. I just love this guy. Love, love him, love him. I mean, I know there's a pumpkin there, but I would leave this out all year. I just love that little black cap. And I am stitching this on a 36 count uh, color and cotton in sea salt which kind of has like a greenish cast to it that I really love. And there's my start. Kind of working my way down the side. I am stitching the alphabet and I got to start on that annoyed cat that you guys know I love so much. So that is Olga. Um, it's not huge, but it would not be a, like it would not be a two or three day stitch. Yeah, 100 by 104 which is like a medium chart to me. Like those, those would take me, I'm trying to think about how, how big gobble gobble was and how many days of stitching that took me. I think that took me six days stitching total on gobble gob and it was slightly smaller. So like anything that's a hundred by a hundred kind of feels like a little over, like almost like two weeks, like maybe a week and a half, two weeks. So there we go. So there's Olga. And that took me through the third week of Mania. So that's 5, 10, 15, 16. 16 starts. So five more. We're on to the last week. So you guys have seen these very recently in my wrap-up video. So I'm going to whip through these. Home of a Needleworker. Let's start number 17, Home of a Needleworker Squared. Um, little House Needleworks has several versions of this chart of Home of a Needleworker, but I'm doing this little squared one, uh, mainly because I have a finishing piece that I know exactly what I want. Like I know exactly what I want it to go on and this little chart fit. I'm stitching it on a 32 count Belfast linen. No idea what color this is. I know it came off stash unload. It, I, I really, I don't know. It doesn't look as dark as summer khaki, but I don't know. So there we go. So that's how far I am. I'm all the way down to one end over here. So um, this one I feel like could potentially stitch up in three or like probably like four days. Um, Cause this was a good day of stitching, but like the rest of the border one day, the words one day, the house maybe two. Feel like it might be more like four, four and a half, but I'm gonna put this on the list to finish up, partially because I have the finishing piece for it. So if I know how I want it finished, it seems like it seems like that should go on the list. All right, the next one was Fragments in Time. I'm doing the 2018 set, the entire set as one big piece. Uh, 
with the free border that Beth Ann Seal put out. So this is my start. I'm stitching this on Stars Hollow. 32 count Stars Hollow linen by R&R &R with called for flosses with one substitution. Um, the yellow was called for toffee and I subbed it with Queen B. But otherwise, that's it. So this is the free border, these little flower buds, and this is the start of the first fragment in time. I love it. So, and this is going to be, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be a little big. It won't go all the way across, I think, like here. So, but it's going to be really pretty all done. Uh, that, that's like, I love it. I'm so excited to stitch it. You'll probably see that next May. <laughs> Let's be honest. Between Jolly July and wanting to stitch all of the fall things and that's beautiful. It'll probably be around for a little while, which is fine because I love it. And I'm going to enjoy every time I stitch on it. Okay. I'm getting a huge pile going on over here. At least I had them all in order in my tote, right? All right. We're coming to the end. Long and Winding Road was next up by Blackbird Designs. And I am stitching this on a 36 count linen from in Weathered Shingle from r and R. I I did do some subbing of flosses. I am changing the colors a little bit, not drastically, but just, I bought a gray shaker box and so I wanted it to look nice with the gray. So I went more black gray tones than brown. So, I mean, that's brown, but there will be brown, but it's overall more gray and black. So there's my start. I started top center on this one and I'll show you my flosses. And I will, when I'm all done with this, I'll post up my conversion. So there we go. It's a lot of the called for. I did sub some color and cotton because as I was kidding up, I just didn't have, I was just kidding from what I had. So there we go. Long and winding road. Getting down to the end. All right, second to last start was the Garden Club series by Blackbird Design. Kind of came together. I said I wasn't going to do more than four Blackbirds, and I ended up with four. I ended up with four and a couple of them came together at the end. So there's 12 charts. I'm gonna do four of them. I'm doing Apple Orchard, Climbing the Trellis, Fairy Garden, Basket of Cherries. I started with Apple Orchard. I'm stitching this on a 28 count platinum linen. Is it platinum? Yeah, 28 count platinum. So far with called four colors, I may be subbing as I go. We'll see, it depends on what I have. But for right now that's called four and I started with Apple Orchard. So I, I'm gonna do all four. I mean, it won't take up this much fabric, but. I had gotten this, this I got off Stash Unload too. And it's a huge piece and it was a good price. So I snapped that up. So it's more than enough to do these four little Blackbird designs, but. Why cut it if I don't have to yet? <laughs> so there we go. There's the start on Apple Orchard. And so the last start of Mania. See, it's a lot of projects, but then it didn't feel like that many projects. But yet, without a mouse, feels like a long time ago. I don't know. Um, all right, last project of Mania, Weatherwise by Prairie Schooler. I'm doing this one up here. I actually really like, sorry, I'm itchy eye. Um, this one here too, A Sunshiny Shower Won't Last Half an Hour. I love that one as well, but I'm starting with this one because it's the one that spoke to me and made me search all over to find the chart, which has now been reprinted. So you can get it too, yay, and not have to search all over for it. Here's my start. I'm stitching this on a 32 count Lugana in Vintage Stormy Night. I'm sure that's right. And I'm using Helen D's 
conversion. She's Helen Dion Foss Tube East Coast Crafter on Instagram. And she has posted her conversion on her Instagram. So you can go over there and find it. And it's beautiful and amazing. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, Helen. You were my inspiration. She was the reason when I saw her stitching this, I was like, I love that. I must have it. Because <laughs> this is a saying, my husband says this all the time. Whenever there's a red sky, he grew up sailing. And so he says this all the time. It's just one of those things that just kind of pops out. And so I wanted to stitch it up. So that's it, guys. That's my mania. Um, it was fun. I so enjoyed doing the little daily vlogs. I appreciate those of you who came along on the ride with me or are catching up with me now. If you want more information about all the charts, I do have a playlist on my channel of all the um, daily vlogs where I spin the wheel and I show you the progress from the day before. Um, so that was really fun to do. I'll probably do that again next year. Um, it's been just, it's been a really fun month. So I hope you enjoyed it as well. And now looks like I have a bit of a list of things to come back and finish. So hope you guys are having a great week and that your June is off to a fantastic start. And here's to all the starts and all the finishes. Cheers. <laughs>